Sang. I'm a IBM senior technical staff member. I'm also a master inventor with IBM. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm at Istio. So um, my day job is also contributing to the Istio project. Um, you guys know IBM uh, a co-founder of the Istio open source project. So I'm one of the uh, core contributors on the project. Uh, recently, I also wrote a book about Istio to help our users to get started with service mesh. So we try to explain Istio uh, to different scenarios with my co-author uh, Dan Berg. Um, so today um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. So first I want to talk about the uh, background of service mesh, uh, you know, why service mesh and quickly introduce you guys to the Istio project. After that, I would like to talk about uh, some journey the community just went through this year where we actually uh, consolidate our control plane components from multiple uh, components into one uh, monolithic. So I want to share you guys uh, the journey of, you know, why we did it and what's the result of doing it. You know, do we feel it's a good move? So for the, those of you coming to learn DevOps, I think that would be uh, super interesting to just to hear, you know, why we actually went through uh, the pain of, you know, using microservices, uh, using service mesh ourselves, uh, go back to monolithic. So let's start talk about some of the background of uh, service mesh. Um, so service mesh really come in to help user to solve the problem of managing microservices does not need to be complicated uh, because service mesh can help user stand Analyze the way the microservices are connecting to each other, uh, the way the microservices are secure uh, to each other, uh, the way uh, to help the, the platform to the owner of the platform to enforce policies on microservices. So uh, service mesh fundamentally is a programmable framework that allows you as a user to observe, secure, and connect microservices, and most importantly, to do it consistently so that, uh, you know, it's... Uh, from different services, you actually have consistent uh, point of view uh, to observe, secure, and connect to your services. How does a service mesh work? Uh, the proxy that sits uh, alongside of your application container is the key piece of the service mesh. Uh, so we call it the bottom layer is the data plane where the proxy help you mediate the traffic. So instead of having your app container, app one, talk directly to app two, in this case, the proxy would actually help you to facilitate uh, think about it as a facilitator to a conference uh, session, right? It actually helps you to facilitate whether the communication should be allowed, whether the connection should be upgraded to mutual TLS, you know, whether, um, you know, app one should to talk to whichever endpoint of app two, um, so all that is mediated by the proxy. The control plane really sits in the role of to help you program that proxy. Uh, program set proxy, unfortunately, is not trivial. Um, if you ever look at, uh, for example, if you ever look at uh, Envoy Saika proxy configuration, you'll be amazed. It's like thousands of lines. So it's nothing simple. Uh, Istio is fundamentally a uh, open service mesh platform. It's a, a open source project, uh, multi-vendor. I think the latest stats shows Istio have like 300 companies, uh, over 400 contributors. So it's uh, it's what's rated as the fastest growing, the the fourth is fastest growing uh, cloud native project uh, from GitHub last year. So it has a lot of uh, momentum around. Uh, it's still. Uh, 
about this connection. So you understand the project a little bit so that you can understand all what scenarios of going back to monolithic. Uh, so it's still uh, same as service mesh architecture. It has control plane and data plane components. It has a sidecar proxy, which we use uh, Envoy as our sidecar proxy to help us uh, mediate the traffic among the services. Uh, it's still used to have uh, multiple components as part of control plane, as you can see, uh, now we recently consolidated into one single component called Istio D. Well, the D stands for daemon. Um, Istio also provides uh, inbound uh, traffic control and secure through Istio ingress gateway. And Istio also provides uh, outbound uh, traffic control through Istio uh, egress gateway. So let's start to talk why microservices prior to one five we had talk about that has, for instance, that uh, pilot is one of the components that helps uh, program uh, the sidecar to distribute the configuration for the sidecar. We have a uh, sidecar injector that helps uh, inject the sidecar uh, into your microservices. We have um, Gailey that ingest the configuration from Kubernetes API server. We also have a component called Citadel that um, means the certificate uh, for the microservices in the mesh. So each component kind of have its own purposes. And, uh, you know, we kind of um, did it because we were like, well, we are a service mesh, right? We want you, uh, we just started with small because uh, each different team uh, within the project was contributing their own thing. Um, and then we want to eat our own dog food also. So we kind of, you know, having ourselves also using the mesh and the we inject the sidecar proxy to most of our control plane components. We uh, we actually leverage like Istio add-ons like Grafana to observe um, the service mesh. So we actually find out uh, communication issues among service mesh uh, control plane components through uh, observabilities we talked about earlier to kind of observe uh, what's going on with the control plane. Um, so we also talk about the of uh, pilot of we we would. But um, after this, uh, at the beginning of this year, we started started looking at, you know, what are the advantage of microservices? Um, we find out people adapting microservices because they are using different programming languages, or maybe the team are operating the services separately, or maybe they have uh, different releases for the services at different time. And also maybe the services will have different scaling characteristic that they really want to scale the components uh, differently. And sometimes maybe they want to deploy their microservices into a different namespace and using network policy to enforce um, the secure boundary of your services, um, or maybe using a service mesh to enforce secure bounds. So in those cases, uh, why people are using microservices, and we look at the, each of these like 
really apply to the Istio project because uh, OOS services are written in Go, so the first bullet doesn't apply. And then people who running Istio in production, they normally is one team operate the Istio control plane. So it's not separate team operating different control plane that they need different control. And we have been never released over components in different schedule. We actually got a lot of feedback from our user that Istio is very complicated. Um, and they have reported different issues with the project. So we actually thought it would be tremendously easy for our user if we can just release everything together and we, we, we don't need to tell people, hey, you actually combine different versions of different components so that is really, really complicated for our user uh, to consume the project. Um, and also we find that we spend a lot of time to improve the performance of the project. So it turned out the components are kind of scaling, uh, you know, closely together. So there wasn't a need for the components to scale independently. Um, we just find out it's just so much easier for us to uh, maintain all these uh, providing a single binary for a user to run and operate and always release them together. So that's when we start to decide, you know, we want to embrace monolithic. We want to provide a simple experience to our users so that they would have only one single commit, one single component to worry about. Uh, instead of multiple, they have one release schedule to worry about. So we started on this journey. Um, on taking out uh, one of the key components is Mixer because we started to distribute uh, Mixer components, uh, the functionality of Mixer to uh, the Envoy sidecar proxy. So that also helps a lot of performance concerns on the project uh, where some of the user will perceive Mixer as a single point of failure. A lot of costs have to go through the Mixer uh, to, to figure out, you know, to travel through the mixer to then allow the service to communicate. So it's being uh, perceived as um, it could be when mixer, if mixer is down, you know, user's data plane could be impacted. So this is why uh, we decided to distribute that mixer functionality to the sidecar proxy. Um, the next component we take out uh, is uh, Gailey. Uh, as you can see, this component disappears um, because uh, we decided that, you know, it's just so much easier uh, to move the functionality of that component into pilot, having pilot to uh, ingest uh, the configuration changes for from the Kubernetes API server. Uh, the next one we took was the Sidecar Injector, which essentially is a webhook server. For those of you um, familiar with Kubernetes, you can build your own webhook server. And our Sidecar Injector is a mutating webhook server. So we essentially just moved that code uh, into pilot. And the last one uh, we Sorry, the second to the last one we move is the node agent on the left side, as you can see, it runs in a node. So node agent used to run as a daemon set, uh, which actually caused a lot of problem for our user because uh, in order to run on, as a daemon set, our user has to config pod secure policy, which is non-trivial. And it's also very sometimes varies with different cloud vendors. Uh, it's very hard to use, very hard to testing, very hard to troubleshooting. So we decided to have the functionality of low agent move into the sidecar proxy. So there's no need to config pass security policy and the sidecar uh, would just uh, having that functionality instead. The last component we moved was uh, Citadel. Citadel uh, essentially uh, manages uh, the keys and certs, uh, means the keys and certs for the mesh. Uh, it provisions, uh, the, distribute the certs uh, to the sidecars, uh, rotate the certificates for the sidecars. So we also uh, merge, merge that functionality into Pilot. 
So uh, why is COD? I think we kind of touch a lot of points on that, but let me just uh, quickly summarize uh, from a user perspective. So uh, we want to simplify users installation experience. So installing like four or five microservices is actually a lot harder than just installing one single component. Uh, we want to make sure user have like one single control plane component that they uh, manage and operate. So it's not just day one installation, it's also day two to actually keep it running to observe uh, uh, what's going on within that a single component is so much easier because sometimes uh, we had communication issues among our control plane components when there were microservices, but now it's just one single component. So uh, user, it's so much easy for user to reporting issues, uh, so much easy to uh, think out uh, to uh, just to observe that one single component. Uh, it's also simplify our configuration experience for a user. Uh, we talk about our path security policy. That was a one major thing for user to adopt. Um, Istio SDS uh, to uh, secure uh, discovery services uh, with uh, the, yeah. Easy because it, you, you have like the multiple endpoints, you have to click to talk to the control plane, but now it's just one um, single endpoint uh, you, you need to talk to. Uh, scalability is also easy because uh, you don't have to uh, scale different components different time. It's just one single thing and debugging also one single logs uh, to look at one single dashboard. We actually find out the startup time improves. Really interesting on this. Um, it turns out we had um, some of the component dependencies among our microservices over self uh, before um, we changed to SDOD. So for instance, uh, Citadel have to start first and then Pilot has to start after Citadel. So there are certain dependencies uh, in there. And sometimes, you know, if they don't start at the right timing, right order, user actually complain uh, and they are uh, users sometimes reports why these components ne services needs to restart more than one time to get it all up running. So uh, when we merge all the components together, uh, we we do find out the start time actually improves. Um, and the performance is also improves. Uh, we talk about sometimes, uh, you know, we had communication issues among our components. So now it's just communicates through local. So it's always simpler and reliable. So, uh, so that's also some of the side benefits. Some of these benefits, interestingly, we actually know, you know, we're going to get uh, some of these benefits, um, you know, we were guessing we would get, uh, but, uh, you know, we couldn't tell for sure until you know we run through the testing when the change is finally made it was just uh, super cool to actually confirm we actually get benefits such as like startup time and performance improvement so I want to share with you um, on the complexity by the numbers so you can actually, you know, picture this a, a little bit more easily. So in 1.4, uh, we actually got a lot of feedback on social media that Istio was way complicated with uh, so many CRDs, 23. Um, so in 1.7, uh, last time I counted, we only down to 12 CRDs. So this is helpful for our user because every single CRD is a learning for them if they need that functionality from Istio. Um, so helping them reduce their CRD help reduce their learning curve uh, for Istio. We used to have uh, seven control plane components uh, with um, 
with add-ons of Prometheus, Grafana, and uh, uh, and all the components I was mentioning early. But now we have like uh, uh, one control plane components, uh, which is Istio D. We still have all the add-ons and the gateways, so those remain unchanged because those are, you know, like the the gateways. They are part of the data planes uh, for the users and also the add-ons are optional so um, you can optionally enable them as you see they provide value for you so uh, we didn't have any intention to change those we used to have one daemon set, uh, which is why we talk about, you know, the complexity of pod security policies. But now uh, we are down to zero uh, daemon set for uh, for the no agent. We still have one daemon set for the CNI, uh, which is uh, an optional component for you to enable if you uh, want, uh, you didn't want to give like uh, net admin privileges for whoever deployed the microservices uh, that wants their services to be injected with sidecar proxy. So you kind of have CNI to, to, to do that for you um, at, um, at, the, at the node level. So tremendous um, complexity improvement. Uh, I want to quickly talk about what's new in the community and also kind of a touch on, you know, how these um, new things related to this uh, SDOD journey we just went through. So the first thing I want to highlight is we've been kind of on this quarterly releases uh, schedule. So this is a uh, thing. Last year, we were able to continue that train to be released quarterly. Uh, we realized uh, Kubernetes has uh, quarterly schedule releases, and we have um, some of the uh, intervened relationship with Kubernetes. So we want to also make sure we're released quarterly for our user. Um, the key features of Istio, I mean, it's really tremendous features, but I just want to highlight a few things I think that's uh, most impactful. So the first thing I want to say is uh, Istio, when people started with Istio, you know, they find out uh, using Istio resources can be hard. And sometimes the syntax error are really, you know, semantics error are really gets people, you know, get them frustrated on the project. So we spend a lot of time to looking at how can we improve user's experience? How can we minimize them to needing to dig through the documentation? How can we provide toolings to help them through toolings to detect what might be wrong with their Istio resources? So Istio Cuddle has a couple of commands to really help user to troubleshooting what might be wrong to warn user to alert user with deprecations. So some of the commands like analyzers, uh, some of the commands like describe, uh, proxy config are uh, tremendously useful for a user. And we spend a lot of time just to help you or a user improve their um, onboarding and adopting uh, stories with Istio. Canary update is one the other big thing I want to highlight. Um, so Istio upgrade, we got a lot of feedback. It's hard. Um, it's also it's so for hard defines in a couple of. Uh, uh, areas. So first is the hard in the sense uh, it's a lot of things to read and a lot of things to digest. Uh, and uh, there may be downtimes uh, when you as you upgrade. So canary update is something you know we introduced as a community to help solving the problem uh, to ensure users can upgrade to newer version of Istio um, with sufficient testing. And only if the testing is successful, they shift uh, the traffic to the new control plan. 
So remember, we've been telling you as users to, when you develop your microservices, you want to do canary blue-green uh, deployments to test your new versions. We finally come to the conclusion that we need similar things for Istio control plane as well, so that you can have sufficient time to testing the new version of the control plane, testing the new version of the data plane, and then do the switch as you feel comfortable instead of like, boom, this is your switch, deal with it, right? So you have a lot more graceful time to uh, work on that switch. We're also working very hard. Uh, this is going to be upcoming uh, in next release 1.8 to get a uh, virtual machine and multi-cluster to beta. Um, so we are in the process to get multi-cluster to beta, I think VMs as well. So this is the area we want to help our user to simplify their Istio experience beyond single clusters. Um, so that if you have workloads on VMs, if you have workloads on a different cluster where you may have building your high availability stories, we want to help you. Uh, we want to help you make sure you feel comfortable within these areas as well. Uh, from an IBM perspective, uh, we've been focusing a lot on external SDOD uh, where we want to provide uh, Istio providers having um, the capability to provide Istio as a service where we manage the control plane for our users. So user doesn't have to worry about control plane uh, installation upgrade. We want to help our user uh, on multi-cluster, which we touched on early, and also UX uh, usability improvement, and also install configuration and upgrade. So basically help you um, to provide a simple installation experience and provide a possibility to manage the control plane for you and provide possibility to help you to grow beyond single clusters. So uh, I'd like to quickly talk about uh, in-place and canary. So we started with, uh, with in-place upgrade. You will start with a simple version of Istio D um, and you will um, then shift to version two of Istio D. And notice there's not much controlling here. So the moment that you shift, even though you're doing a rolling upgrade, let's say you have three parts of Istio D, you may be doing rolling upgrades. So your first um, replica is moving to version two, then your second replica, but there's not much in control to say, hey, I want a day to do this testing, make sure it's thorough. So, then you are moving your proxy, which is uh, you're moving your proxy from V1 to V2. Again, you don't really have a lot of control for testing. It just, you do have rolling upgrade, but it happens still pretty fast uh, within that window. And then you will be switched over, right? So this is the experience we're providing to our user with in place. Uh, with Canary, notice here, I want to highlight uh, before we dive into Canary upgrade, I want to highlight because of where consolidate all the control plane components to single Istio D, this is why we could afford to offer a uh, canary to our user because it's just one single control plane you need to shift now. So single endpoint, you need to worry about the shifting. So with Canary, you can see, you know, user starts with V1 uh, with uh, the control plane and the proxy. And then now user would be uh, deploy version two of the control plane. User would also deploy uh, version two of the proxy. And the user would do testing with um, version two of the proxy with version two of the control plane. And uh, after the testing is successful, user can feel confident to move a little bit more workload over and uh, gradually move more workload over. So they have a lot of control here. So they can do like 10%, 50%, 90%. 
as they wish. And eventually, you know, they can, once they're really happy with version two on the proxy and also the control plane, they can move all the workload over and then they can kill the, the version one of the control plane. So you do have full control. You know exactly how long you want to test you have full confidence to make sure it didn't regress anything, whether it's functional or performance, and then you do the switch over. So external control plane is really what we attempted to, um, like I mentioned earlier, we run Istio control plane outside of your cluster. Uh, so the vendors can potentially manage control plane for you uh, and not consuming any resources in your cluster. So this is something um, we envision would be super helpful for our users so that they don't have to worry about uh, control plane updates. They don't worry, need to worry about secure connection to the control plane. So we will take care of that for our user. The community is also doing a lot of work on multi-cluster. We are uh, consolidating our models for multi-cluster. And notice here, you know, all this work because of Istio D, because we were able to um, simplify the control plane components into one component. So all this work make external Istio D and multi cluster a lot simpler because the consolidation to Istio D. So uh, we want to provide for multi cluster, we want to allow user to run Istio D within their cluster if they choose to for maximum high availability, or if they choose to have a shell control plane, uh, well, um, multiple clusters just using one control plane, that's also possible. So with that, I'm going to jump into a live demo. Wish me luck. Um, so, um, sorry, I have a little bit of screen reset early on. So I'm going to share with you my environment. Um, so I have two cluster I deploy in our IBM cloud, uh, Kubernetes clusters. Um, so as you can see, um, on the right side is my management cluster. <coughs> Excuse me. So on this cluster, um, Hopefully my connection is still good. So on this cluster, I deploy Istio D um, on Istio 2 namespace. I also have another Istio running on this cluster, mainly for the purposes of uh, just to expose this Istio D to external outside of this cluster. On the left side of my cluster. Can you guys see my screen okay, by the way? Good? Okay, so the questions I will try to get at the end. Um, let me actually increase the font a little bit, just making sure you guys can see it. Because I, I don't get any feedbacks. Okay. Um, so on my, on my Left side, I also have another cluster. So on this cluster, I want to share with you, I also installed in the namespace uh, Istio 2 um, that I have. Uh, so I just have my gateway running and you can see my gateway also have, um, have a service, uh, it's deployed as a load balancer, so it has an external IP. So what I'm going to do next is I want to share with you that um, I'm going to deploy book info into my namespace. So as you can see, some of my namespace, I have um, I have a sidecar injector enabled. So I'm going to enable a sidecar. Ooh. Enable namespace default Istio injection enabled. So with Istio, you can very simple to inject your namespace for sidecar 
uh, injection. Um, so you just uh, do what I just did uh, to label it. And then I want to go ahead and deploy uh, book info. If we can find it, samples. Uh, samples book info, I think it's under platform. Cube and how many of you are familiar with the book info application? It's uh, one of our standard application for uh, Istio. The reason I want to show that uh, um, app is because you know I want to minimize the learning of the app. The purpose is really to show you, you know, I have this uh, control plane running uh, outside of my cluster, and it's actually managing the data plane are running on the left side of the cluster and also show you, you know, we consolidate all the components of uh, control plane together. So there's only one uh, component that needs to be updated, installed and managed for the control plane. So as the pods uh, reaches running now, we're going to deploy uh, the gateway uh, resources. The reason why we want to deploy, let me define, it might be faster. The reason I want to deploy uh, gateway resources is, um, uh, delete, okay, sorry. <laughs> Thought it would be faster to do apply, samples, book info. Network. Yep. So uh, the, the, the reason we want to deploy the gateway is we want to expose uh, the book info to the gateway uh, so that you can access the application. So it's really simple. We're exposed on port 80 and we're exposed a bunch of URL and it routes the traffic to product page on 9080. So we have the IP address for the Istio Ingress Gateway running here, right? So let's go ahead to visit the product page. Um, so coming over to here, bring up my browser here. Uh, get out of here. So what we are going to do next is we're going to do a uh, visit the book info. So if you're familiar with the book info, uh, it's basically a, a, a service that shows reviews of the books uh, that it has like uh, three version of the reviews. So black and uh, red and no, rev no stars. So those are the three versions. So what we're going to show next is, uh, you know, we want to do uh, traffic shifting uh, to header-based routing because I want to test the version two without exposed to everybody. With you can see with um, default behavior of Kubernetes, it's going to expose everything to our user. So that's not really what I wanted because I want to make sure you know we can test everything first. So what we are going to do is uh, we're going to find out um, the booking for uh, virtual service. So we're going to do uh, deploy virtual service uh, reviews uh, test version two and I'll show you what it looks like in, in case you haven't seen it. So this uh, is basically says when the user JSON logs in, you know, I want to only test the version two and for everybody else, I want to do version one. So let's see if this works. Hmm, this is interesting. I'm actually having an issue now with uh, product page reviews after I deploy this configuration file. So let's actually check out what's going on. Remember we talk about Istio Cardo. Um, so Istio Cardo has a command called analyze. So what analyze uh, would do is um, it will analyze uh, So in my virtual services, I have uh, subsets uh, referred to, and these are not found in destination rules. 
So uh, if you look at the destination rule now, um, you probably can find out, you know, I don't have any destination rules. Sorry, my internet is a little bit unstable. What we do next is apply um, book info's uh, destination rules um, networking. So we're going to do destination rule rules rip. The destination rule for the reviews are applied. Now the configuration would be successfully distributed from the control plane to the plane, finger crossed. Now I would really, really slow now. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so now you can see the review information did come back. Now, if I log in as Jason, sorry, log in. I know I need to wrap up this quickly too. So this actually won't work. So I have to log in as lowercase. And if I log in as Jason, now you can see, you know, I always get the black star. And if I log out, you know, uh, you can see I always get version one. So that's essentially the demo. Um, I know I'm running out of the time. I will stay a little bit longer to look at the questions. But I want you, before I let you guys go, I want to summarize. I'm going also doing a book session about my book. If you're interested to learn more about Istio, I'm going to talk about Istio Explained a book. You know, why did I wrote the book? Who is appropriate for reading the book? So join me at uh, noon, I guess, uh, in a little bit over 10 minutes at the virtual theater. Thank you so much for attending. I'm sorry, we're running a little bit of time. I will take uh, questions offline here. Awesome, thank you very much, Lynn. That was a great presentation. Thank you for everyone that attended. Um, my name is Josh, I'm gonna do a little bit of housekeeping that we weren't able to get at the very beginning. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with DevOps Days, first off, we're really glad that you're here. Um, you know, we'll be doing open spaces as part of this. The basic idea is throughout the next day and a half, you can uh, contribute topics that you'd like to discuss. I'll throw that in chat in just a second. And then we'll gather around, have discussions on that. And we'll share with the group throughout the rest of the day and through tomorrow on how you can contribute to that. We also have a job board. That link is also coming in just a moment. Um, so make sure you post if you have a job opening or if you're looking. And if you enjoyed this presentation that you saw today, we are going to be going live in person again with DevOps Days Raleigh 2021 back at the McKimmon Center. Um, we're hoping it's going to be in person. That's the plan for April 8th. Details are going to be in chat in just a moment. Our next presentation in this room is going to be microservice continuous delivery with Dan Garfield. So thanks again for joining. And as promised, I'm about to post that information into the chat. So you have an opportunity to grab those links. Just have to do that computery thing. And here we go. Uh, so thanks again, Lynn, for the presentation. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing your uh, job light or your uh, book uh, signing thing here shortly. All right, am I up? Go for it. Well, I think based on the schedule, the next session starts in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So uh, let it go for 10 minutes. Gotcha. Yes, I believe so. So yeah, I'm looking at the schedule. It's um, from 12 p.m. to 12.45. And if I'm being very transparent, I don't know how that translates to <laughs> jumping in between. Uh, so, uh, you know, with that being said, I did track the questions. So we'll just assume that uh, we're giving people an opportunity to go back and forth. Um, Lynn, if you're up for answering a question, um, the first question that came in was from Justin Chow. Is there any performance concern for having sidecar containers proxying all traffic to or from each microservice?
Uh, you are very muted. We can barely hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Very lightly, but you're there. Okay, great. Um, I hope this is better. I'm trying to hold close to my speaker now. Um, so yes, definitely there are performance concerns on having sidecars. Uh, so you have to look at your particular scenarios. But I would tell you the sidecar proxy um, has very minimum performance impact to each of your microservices. And also most importantly, if you don't have sidecar proxy, you will have the need to have similar code in your microservices to serve the same functionality, which is going to be a lot more costly. Um, and also, if your microservices are using different languages, you know, um, to be able to maintain all that code in different languages is even harder. So thankfully, the Sidecar Proxy is using Envoy, which is a high performance uh, proxy, and it's really battle tested with like 2 million per second in production environment like Lyft. So you are leveraging like the best of open source uh, to using Envoy as your sidecar proxy to help mediate your traffic. Excellent. And there was one other question that came in from Stephen Wong. Did the Istio re-architecture change the resource requirements uh, with respect to memory and CPU? That's a great question. I think um, it, when I look back to the statistic, I think it actually helped reduce some of the CPU and memories for control play. So we do have the statistic on Istio performance onto Istio.io. So if you go to Istio.io on the top right side, there's a search button. You can see the latest performance uh, numbers we have, um, like latencies for sidecars. And also we publish like default configuration for uh, the control plane components we recommend. Uh, so all that data is there. 